This upcoming Shabbat, we're going to read the Torah portion of Vayikra, the beginning of the book of Leviticus. This is the book that dealing with Maaseh um, Korbanot, all the rituals, laws, and regulations involved with the sacrificial offering that took place at the ancient time during the era of the first in the second temple. The question that many people asked is why do we need to hear and read that in our days? Um, we, in a situation for 2,000 years, we do not have temple. Uh, yes, it's part of the Pentateuch, it's a part of the five books of Moses, yet it's still something that um, it's hard to see application, especially all the specification of rituals. Furthermore, what's the historical, the background of all of that? I'd like to share with you the Rambam, Maimonides, of the era of the middle 12th century. Um, Maimonides from uh, Spain, Morocco, and Egypt and Israel. Um, he was a physician, philosopher, and rabbi. One of his books was uh, the Moren Nebuchim, the Guide for the Perplex. In that book, chapter 32, the Rambam tried to rationalize, to tell us the reason for the story of the sacrificial offering. He said that since our people were mainly outside of our land, and they exposed to um, not only assimilation, but the society who are idol worshippers. If you go to the story of Egypt, how our people were part of the Egyptian culture that worshipped the, um, the um, animals, the same the Kasdiyim, they uh, worshipped the uh, Seirim, so there's a different form of goat and, and, and sheep and others that, they, that those ancient people worship. And in order to, he called it Lerapot Emunot Raot, in order to heal those wrong thinking, the idea of wishful thinking to idol worshiping, therefore the Almighty instituted the idea that bring it as a sacrificial offering to God. Um, the Gemara in Tractate Sanhedrin, page 102, share with us a well-known story about three important kings in our history, in the Tanakh, that never have a share in the world to come. They said the name is Ahav, the king that lived in the time of Eliyahu, Yerobam, and Menashe. So, the, the Gemara discussed each of them, and then they reached the third one, Menashe, they used the term Menashe Chavereinu. They, our colleague, our friend, Menashe, will discuss tomorrow. That was the statement made by the rabbi, name was Rav Ashi. The Gemara elaborates on that and said that right away, the next, that evening, um, Rav Ashi had a dream, and Menashe, the king, appeared to him in a dream. And he asked him a question, he said, do you know which side we slice the bread, as we know we do a mozi, so we slide the bread, so if you have the bread, which side you use? And Rav Ashi did not have the answer. So Menashe asked him, so why you call me your colleague, your friend, if you don't have an answer? And he said, the answer is, if you go over the part that was well cooked, that's the, the yellow, the, the almost brown part, that's the part you cut the bread. Then he continued, he said, since we have some distance in our learning, why are you planning to badmouth me, to tell the living, you students, bad things about me worshipping? So Ravashi responded, he said, well, it's well known, it's written in Tanakh, that you idol worshipping. In the temple you brought the, the idol. So Menashe said to him, look, 
In my time, people used to have a long robe. And the reason that we wore that, those robes, it's because it was such a Yetzer Hara, such a strong evil inclination to idol worshiping. So we hope by carrying this long robe, we will be able to restrain ourselves from going and worshiping idols in a way to do it a little slower, like the story we read two weeks ago about Aaron who tried to delay the idol worshiping of the golden calf. He said, I bet if you, Rav Ashi, live in my time, you not only fold your robe, but you will be among those who rush to idol worshiping. So, the Gemara instructed Yoma said that the sages pray hard and they are able, after they come again and pray and did all the rituals, that that evil inclination was uprooted from the heart of the people. And it's a description of how it's come out of the Holy of Holies in the special image. It's a long uh, writing. But the whole idea is the Nachmanides explain this Rambam, you bring him in this week's Parashayim by Ikra. The idea is that it was a great need at that time, which is hard for us to comprehend. If you go to those far away, Tibet and other countries, you may understand a little bit the school of idol worshipping in some form, but today is kind of strange. The reality is it was a great inclination to do it. And because of that, that was the motive, that was the notion that people have and in a way our prayer and hope as we said every day that by reciting those prayers and those rituals our lips our words will be a substitute by prayer we substitute that ritual of um, um, sacrificial offering yet we still pray that Beit HaMikdash should be rebuilt soon speedily in our days. Amen. Amen.